came in to say this. Did the Brooklyn Nets do enough to make themselves better than they were last year? We're going to look at the talk of the town real quick. You know, we talking on Mikey Step Back Basketball Channel. And we're going to look at this roster. But first, kind of look at what they got in this year's draft and understand what that means for them. Five players drafted on 2021. I don't think they did as good as they should have. Um, besides the man you're seeing, Mr. Cam Thomas, a, a bona fide scoring killer. I don't know what they're doing, actually, with, with the moves that they made and the people they lost. They're trying to replace some with what they lost. But let me get into the draft real quick, and I'm trying to understand what they're doing, but it looks like a three-point shootout, okay? Cameron Thomas in the first round, their first pick, a 19-year-old, a guy that has extreme potential with losing Dinwiddie. It looks like Cam Thomas is going to try to come in and play that role. I don't know what could have came back out of Dinwiddie. I know injuries scar you. Uh, big injuries like a knee injury really can set you back as a player. It's all about your body and how you come back. But technology has made it so you can come back. But Dinwiddie was going to be a little bit expensive. Dinwiddie want to burn. But he would have been perfect with the Nets. They needed that second uh, unit killer. The guy that's the, the Lewis Williams. And I thought Dinwiddie would be that. And he would be able to keep him. But they did not. They draft Thomas, and now he's going to have to come in and kind of play that role with your boy Mike James. Hopefully they re-sign him and then are not dumb enough to let him go. Darian Sharp comes in, a big guy, after losing DeAndre Jordan, who I believe is still out there. I think DeAndre Jordan is gone from the team. Uh, they get Mr. Sharp, a guy that has realistic potential to be a great rebounder in this league. Um, you know, I... I like him. I like him. I like what he brings to the table. Um, I think there's more to him than what they think they have uh, from Sharp. I saw some serious potential uh, to be a promising offensive pick and roll type player. You know, a guy that comes up, you know, gets the dunks, um, maybe a double digit score. Uh, but definitely a double-digit rebounder. Not sure about the blocking. Uh, the defense for Sharp will more so be in the post, being a big, strong kid, uh, able to push guys back. So I like I like Sharp. I think it wasn't a bad pick. But now when we get to the second round is where I have a lot of issue with the talent that was available. They go with these these namers, right? And and the Spurs surprised me. I just did a video on Josh Primo. I didn't do my 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 homework on the kid, and then I realized this guy's not so bad. When I look at Kessler Edwards, I say, okay, he's a three point killer. All right, seventeen points per game, forty percent, almost a forty percent clip from three. Okay, Kessler may be something uh, that we we weren't thinking about. But then they go out and they draft a guy by Zagari. I'm not sure of his talent level, and I'm not, I'm not sure you waste a draft pick on a guy that wasn't on anybody's draft radar, in my opinion. I, I think this is a pick. This is a guy you pick up over the summertime, right? Put him on a summer league uh, uh, squad, and, and and you see what what he does, right? You don't pick up that kid in in, in the freaking uh, NBA draft in the second round, especially with all the talent. That they have. It made no sense to me, but the moves were made and they drafted this kid. Okay. They did what they did. It is what it is. Okay. So Zagari comes in, uh, the, the latest draft pick. Uh, and he's not even on this roster right now. And then they and then they throw in another another pick in, in a Rocky Gray, uh, a guy again who wasn't really on the draft radar. You had, you know, no offense, I'll throw it out there. They had Matt McClung. They had all these guys that was out there that was available uh, that they could have grabbed who I thought would have been better pieces. I think Matt McClung would have been a great fit for the New Jersey Nets and not sure why they didn't look at him uh, when you look at the draft track, right? With so many different prospects, it's always a head scratcher for NBA teams and their scouting. Like, why Why did you do this, right? Why? Why would you make this move? You can look at the prospect list, and I can go down because there's a lot of guys that did not get drafted, right? You know, even a Jericho Sims, they had the opportunity to get Jericho Sims, a perfect uh, replacement for Jared Allen, right? Why Raheem get Gray, right? I see I see Gray's up there, 6'8", 268. He's a little bit higher ranked, but I would have went with Jericho. It's a fit thing, right? So it, it makes me angry. Deshaun Nix, undrafted. Undrafted guard, big guy. Why not from a defensive perspective? Why not? That's the question. You got to ask yourself. Okay. Um, 
Scotty Lewis was there. So many big talents. Garza, John Petty Jr. John Petty Jr. Why not? Right? It, it, it's crazy to me. Um, you know, there goes Marcus Sagari, Creighton guard, 6'2", 180. Okay? And, you know, I, I, I just don't understand the metrics that they're using to I have to go deep in this because you're taking opportunities man you really are mac mcclellan was really low on his ranking but he has a name i get it maybe i'm there but you know eves ponds was another one right especially with all the scoring you have already you go for a big athletic guy that can be defensive be defensive because i think that's what they need where's your long guy that's gonna guard your boy Mr. Giannis Antetokounmpo, right? The 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 76ers just got longer by adding in Andre Drummond. You got Drummond <laughs> Drummond, one of the top rebounders in the NBA, paired up, right? Paired up with Joel Embiid, and I don't know where Ben Simmons is going, and I don't know if he's going to get traded. They got Tobias Harris. But if I'm if I'm in this we're going to go in on the sixes. If I am the New Jersey Nets, I got to get some long talent. All right. I have to get some long defensive talent. Raheem Gray, for me, I'm not sure he is the guy that takes you to that next level. Right. I'm not sure Raheem Gray is the kid that you draft. That's, you know, now, now, be it May, I'm, I'm going to sputter a little bit. I'm going to close this off. But they did draft your boy. They did draft your boy, uh, uh, Gray, maybe because of this guy, right? Um, j- j- what's uh, your boy, Mr. Green, a guy who I think was a no-brainer to re-sign, a guy that was helping them tremendously, right, you know, w- w- was let go. He left to, 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 I mean, gone. Green is gone for almost nothing, went over to the freaking uh, uh, Denver Nuggets. I'm appalled at the movement and what's happening with the Nets. Now, with those pieces, okay, there were small little moves that I did, like Javon Carter added from a defensive perspective on the Nets, okay? Chris Chios is still there. Where is Mike James at, right? Mike James has to be here. You'd be stupid to let him go, okay? All right? Then you add on, you know, DeAndre's still on the roster. Right? You got to say what it is. Harris comes back. Can he have a strong year? Can they re-sign Griffin? He's needed. He's definitely needed. Okay. Um, Kevin Durant's there. You know, Nikki Claxton. You know, these these are these are these are top, you know, they're 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 still strong. Then they went out and got James Johnson to try to replace Mr. Green leaving. Uh for me. The Rasta is slightly better. I'll tell you why it's slightly better. From a dude, from a guard perspective, they got better with Javon Carter, Mr. Mike James, and I love Chris Chioza as well. They, those th- four make them formidable in the East and very deadly from all angles. They got the defense in Carter, some speed in Chioza, the all-inclusive player who I love, a step-back king in Mike James, and then you had Kyrie. I do like the lineup. I think Chris Chios is probably the better facilitator, but he's really not going to see too much run. When you look at their um, – let's go depth chart real quick, boys. When you get into the um, shooting guard position, okay, and that's – you know, there goes Harden. You know, I, I'm sorry. Harden was playing point guard. You know, that, that's true. You know, uh, you got you got Kyrie Irving at the shooting guard position. I think that's accurate. Jo- Josh, you know, what's his name, Mr. – Harris, they got as a backup, but he's not. Cam Thomas comes in as the backup. Bruce Brown's there. And then you got T. Johnson. J- small four position. You got Brown, Harris. There is a glut. I do see that. Cabarro and Edwards, okay? Power four position. This is where Green was coming in a little bit and getting his run. It was it was Duran Griffin, you know, and, and now they're going to have Perry. And, and, you know, and then you, you're going to add in maybe, maybe, maybe some Claxton there. Claxton used to be very, very ambidextrous, right? You know, Perry comes along. Let's see, we get our Rocky Gray. And then at the center position, you got Griffin Green, Jordan, Darian Sharp. I mean, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, because of rotational and minutes, it's kind of difficult to project. 
you know, who's going to play so I can see why Green said I got to bounce. I need some minutes. So um, that said, the Nets make some moves in the draft. Not 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 my favorites, but but as we continue on and watch them proceed to this next season, hopefully an injury, a season that's not filled with injuries, they should have enough backup help to put them in the same position they were last year. And then it's all up to Durant and Mr. Harden to be healthy to make them get to the next level. Are they still the favorites in the East? Okay. I'm going to say there is a slight fear from what I'm seeing with a couple teams that are coming on, right? I'm not going to say they're doing it, doing it well yet, but the Miami Heat with the moves they made are something to think about big time. Big, big freaking time, all right? The other team, I'm not going to say Chicago Bulls are there. If they don't sign Lori Marketing, forget about it. If they cannot sign Lori Marketing to a contract, forget about it. But if they're able to sign Lori and keep their squad, maybe add another athletic center, right? So they should have drafted Jericho Sims. I think that the Bulls may be in the conversation. Can they beat the Nets? No. Giannis, small moves are the biggest moves. We'll talk about that. But they lost a lot. P.J. Tucker and defensive help. I don't think they're repeating. I think that's over. And then the Sixers, let's see what they can do. I'm going to sign off here a little bit long video on the Nets because they're a big team. Did they get better, man? I'm not sure. I think they're slightly. Uh, I think they got. I think they're, I think they're even now. I think they're even because I'm giving respect to Cam Thomas, and I love the dude, man, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson is the dog. I like him when he gets his minutes. So we're going to see what happens. James Johnson joins. Cam Thomas joins. I don't think Sharp will get minutes. We got to see the impact. I'm out of here. Step back forever. Peace.